بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد
Somebody's thinking about how great they themselves are. And arrogant. The irony of the whole thing. So this is one way of following whichever way they go. This is one way, certainly. You know, our dean teaches us to clean up the way in which we speak. He said, this is such a profound statement. You could have mentioned the name of corrupt things is horrible after you have iman. You can't even mention those things after you have iman. You're disgusted by mentioning terrible things. Yet we live in a culture where comedy, for example, has entirely to do with either shameless, vulgar things, obscene things, or funny, right? Every other joke has to do with something disgusting, something Muslims would never talk about, would never be entertained by, yet that's comedy. Or Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, لا يسخط الله من قومن Don't let one group, one nation make fun of another nation. And what is comedy nowadays? Except for imitation of how the Chinese speak, or how the Indian speaks, or how the Arab speaks. One nation making fun of another. That's comedy for you. This guy does a really great imitation, and he communicates with other verses very, very well. Therefore, he must be a great comedian. So they follow this path. And Allah tells us, don't make fun of another nation. And we say to ourselves, shut up, brother, it's just comedy. It's just, you know, it's all fun. It's just entertainment. You don't have to make such a big deal out of it. So what I'm trying to tell you is we are following and being basically victimized by a legacy we don't even realize we're following that track. We don't even realize it. I'll tell you something. Many of you here, they will know the parents. You might find this disturbing, but I have to share this with you. Your your kids and the youth, even the religious youth, among themselves, just jokingly, they might mention something about homosexuality. They might make a joke about it. They might find it funny too. They might laugh at each other about it. Oh, that movie was really gay. And everybody's going to be laughing. Yet, when we use these words, who made this, this terminology mainstream? This is a word, and this is a concept, an idea, that the Muslim would never even consider bringing up in conversation, much less joke about it. And yet it's become part of the culture. It's so in our face all the time that even we have incorporated it into our daily conversation. This is a sign that there is a deterioration occurring. There is a problem that's happening. We are being desensitized. But at the same time, I do want to let you know that the, the, the concern of my sharing these ideas with you is not to be condescending to another group of people not to say that we're better than the Jews and the Christians. By the end of the talk, inshallah, that will become that's not the reason I'm telling you this. Because Muslims ride on this high horse too many times and fall flat on their face. At least we're not like that. What do you mean about that? What is what's missing in you? So now, in the few ways in which we imitate or we have followed the nations before us, one of them, I want to share with you some ayat of the Quran that show us or Allah that criticizes or basically awakes us up that we don't follow into that lesser soul. For instance, Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in Al-Baqarah, أَمْ تُرِيدُونَ أَنْ تَسْأَلُوا رَسُولَهُمْ كَمَا سُئِلَ مُوسَى مِنْ قَبْلُ Do you intend to question your messenger like Musa alayhi salam was questioned before? Is that what you want to do? And what this tells us from another hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the three things that Allah does not like is kathra to su'al. Too many questions. Too many questions. If you look at a change in paradigm, a change in mentality, on the one hand that you have the companions of the Messenger they come to Rasulullah and they ask him, what more can I do to please Allah? Tell me something that will get me into Jannah. Tell me something that will bring me close to Allah. Tell me something I, a dhikr I can make that is the most reward. These are the questions the Sahaba are asking. Right? What more, how more they can become slaves of Allah? This is what they ask. You go across the Muslim world to a alim, a scholar, who gives a reminder to the people, he reminds them and he gives them something from the deen, he tells them words of the Rasul he tells them words of Allah, and you go to the Q&A session. What do people ask? People don't ask, what more can I do for Allah? They ask, what more dunya can I enjoy? Can I get that halal too? Is that haram? Can I do that too? Can I have that too? Can I do this transaction? Can, is that halal? Is that halal? Is that halal? Meaning, instead of asking what more I can do for Allah, we ask what more of dunya can we legitimize for ourselves? A change in mentality. A complete shift. A complete shift. Allah Azza wa asks us a rhetorical question. And so the Prophet, it's such a strange question. 
الى الارض انا بي دونت بي ريال ذا ميا ذا 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 اتس ا ريتوريكال كويشن الله اعرف ذا ميرس يو يو ار بيز ويز ذس وورلد اوفر ذا نيكس اتس انديرستاندبل تو كاب ذس بيز ويز ات اتس انديرستاندبل فور سم هو دوزنت نو ذا بليجرز اوف ذا فور ذا ذا هوربل ثينجز وي نيد فور ذا ذا هيلث فاير وي دونت نو ذا ذا اونلي هاف ذس ميا ذا انديرستاندبل بس يو نو ان يو ار ان ذس ويز ذس ميا واتس فور ذا دي ما لكم في هذه الحياه كين يا ايها الذين امنوا ما لكم What is wrong with you? So now, this is one way: asking too many questions and asking questions that loosen our relationship with this thing. We want to further distance ourselves from Allah's obedience, rather than bringing ourselves, you know, closer. Then another very interesting legacy within the Christian tradition. That's a more subtle thing. I need you to pay attention if you understand this, inshallah. I pray you to tell me this in clear fashion. You know, the Christian tradition originally, for example, Catholicism that dominated the Christian world was an otherworldly kind of thing. Don't marry as an evil thing. If you want to reach the highest states of spirituality, deny worldly life, be a monk, live in the monastery. And there was an, almost a, an allergic reaction to that version of Christianity. Five minutes. Okay. There was an allergic reaction to that version of Christianity with the rise of the Protestant movement. And at the very end of the Protestant movement, you know what you have basically? A new Christianity. And in this Christianity, the more dunya you have, the more God loves you. If you listen to a preacher, he's evangelical, or anybody else, on a Sunday afternoon, they'll tell you, go get that promotion. God wants you to live well. Get that second mortgage. Refinance your house. Get that new car. You need to show that God has blessed you. And this mentality, unfortunately, seeps its way into the Muslim mind. When we start thinking, I'm going to throw a party because I just got a house. Or I'm going to throw a party and I'm going to show people my new car. The more dunya we acquire, the more we celebrate. These are favors of Allah. But we have forgotten that all of these favors of Allah that are halal on us are not actually the reason for celebration. What we celebrate is the obedience to Allah. We have Eid at the end of obeying Allah. We have Eid at the end of performing the Hajj. Obedience to Allah is what we celebrate. Not dunya. Allah gave us something much better than dunya to celebrate. Yet we became people who feel we must be really good Muslims because Allah got me a really great job. And I have really good health. And I got my immigration cleared very quickly. And Alhamdulillah, Allah must love me. Just like the two gardeners mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. We don't have to have time to go into the story because I have four minutes. So this is one way in which we follow the nation before us. Our mentality has changed. The way we think about dunya has changed. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, "From the day of dunya, the day of the moon, right? Yom Yajbaru kum li Yom Yajbaru. That is the day of the moon. The day on which we gather you for that day of gathering. That is the day of winning and losing. This is not winning and losing. That's winning and losing. That day of gathering. So again, our mentality suffers a change. Finally, I'm going to skip a few things. Inshallah, we're going to go straight to the last few things that I want to share with you. One of the ways in which we have followed the nations before us, and this is probably the scariest one. If I don't even get to finish the other four points I have, if I finish this one, I'm happy. And this one thing is the relationship this nation has, this ummah has with its book, the Quran. Our ummah was bestowed the great gift of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the final revelation of Quran. The Messenger of Allah tells us in an authentic hadith. صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أهل القرآن، people of Quran، لا تتبصر القرآن، وتلوه حق إلى غدي من آلاء الليل والنهار. I'll come to the meaning of the hadith this hadith at the end. The people who came before us, you tell me now. I'll listen to the answer from the audience. You tell me. Were the people before us given books? They were given books. What was when these guys given which book? They were given the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla talks about that nation and the relationship they had with their book. He talks about that nation and the relationship they had with which book? Which book? At-Tawar. He says, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّكُونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِي وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُونَ Among them, among the Nisra'i, they are unlettered people. Uneducated, not uneducated in terms of finance or accounting or medicine. Uneducated in terms of their own book. They don't know the book except their own wishful thoughts. Amani, amani means wishful thoughts. They don't know what it says. They think they know what it says. That's all they know. What they do nothing more than make assumptions. 
Christian. That's all they do. They don't really know their book, the Torah. They just make assumptions about it. Now, I want to share with you what Ibn Abbas and Qatala what they said about this ayah. I want to share with you what they said about this ayah and my point is done. What they say that said about this ayah is amani. Amani, which is their crime. They reduce the relationship with themselves and their God to just amani, which will cause. They said amani and tilawa. Ya'lamuna fu hifwan wa qira'atan bila fahm la yadruna ma fiha. Indama yaqtasiruna ala ma yuta'alayhi. They said, Amani in this ayah means all these people do is tilawa. You know what tilawa means? Who here knows what tilawa means? Let me hear it. Recitation? All they know about Torah is what? Recitation. Ya'lamunahu hifban. They know it in terms of hif. You know what hif is? They know it in terms of memorizing some parts of it. What tilawa is? You know what tilawa is? Recitation again? The only thing they do with their book is they memorize some parts of it and they recite some parts of it. La yadruna ma fiha, they don't know what's inside. The only thing they know is they memorize some things and they recite some things. And that's it. They're very happy even if somebody recites it to them. That's enough for them. This is the description of a Sahabi ibn Abbas al-Qur'an of, of what they did with their book. Now the topic of my speech was going into the lizard's hole. What do we do with our book? You go across that, I'm not going to be talk, I'm not going to talk, talk down to the Muslims living in Bangladesh or in Egypt or in Pakistan or in Indonesia or in Turkey. Forget all of that. Let's go across the United States. Let's travel to the Muslim communities across the United States. MashaAllah, well-educated community. Is the vast majority of them people that love their book, that recite their book, that memorize their book. But the vast majority of them has no idea what the book says. Is that true or no? SubhanAllah. The description is of a Sahabi, of the nation of Lord. That's the thing that scares me the most. May Allah Azza wa make us truly a people of Quran. And again, I know my time is up. I'll just tell you the meaning of that I shared with you in the beginning, and I'm done, inshallah. O oh, people of Qur'an, ya ahl of Qur'an. La tatawassal al Qur'an, don't become complacent with the Qur'an. Don't become lazy with the Qur'an. It's not a pillow for you to relax on. Matluhu haqqa tilawatihi min ala'i layli wa nahar. Read and follow it. As it deserves to be read and followed in all hours of the night and day. Wakshuhu and spread it. Wa tawannahu and beautify it. Wa tadabbuhi and reflect deeply in it. La alakum tuflihun. So that all of you may succeed. Allahumma ja'ala min tuflihun. Allah, 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 Allah